the relationship with Prince Andrew. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I am examining, as part of the great exposure, various aspects of Harry's wife's life to determine the likelihood of the allegations being correct and true based upon, of course, the evidence, but also the propensity of a narcissist to engage in such behaviour. One of the distinct advantages that you have as a consequence of following my work is that you get under the bonnet of the behaviour of the narcissist. You get into the mind of the narcissist as a consequence of my understanding of the way that my kind function and operate. This means that ordinarily you might be scratching your head as to why would this person behave in the way that they would, but once you understand that they are a narcissist and by utilising my work, you then gain unrivaled insight so that you go, ah, now it makes sense as to why that person would behave in that manner. It also then assists with regarding the prediction of behaviour also. Many of the people that consult with me ascertain what they're dealing with, and as a combination of existing material and my bespoke advice, are then able to be put in a particularly advantageous position of knowing what will come next. One can predict the behaviours of the narcissist based upon the evidence that exists and the very fact that they are a narcissist. With Harry's wife, I'm looking at that with regard to the various allegations that have been made against her. One of the allegations is that she and Prince Andrew actually knew one another before she came into the royal family as a consequence of her marriage to Prince Harry. In spare, Prince Harry contends that Harry's wife mistook his uncle, the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, for an assistant to the Queen. He wrote, My uncle Andrew was seated beside her, the Queen, holding her handbag, and then began to escort her, the Queen, out. After a moment, Harry's wife asked me something about the Queen's assistant. I asked who she was talking about. She replied, The man who walked her to the door, namely Prince Andrew. This has been included to purportedly tell us that Harry's wife didn't know who Prince Andrew was. Now, first of all, let us ask the question, could that be accurate? Well, the fact is that in some instances, a narcissist may not remember who somebody is, even somebody that they've met previously, because the narcissist operates from a position of superficiality. And it's very much the case that Harry's wife does behave in this way. Harry's wife is only interested in a person to the extent that they can do something for her. She is only interested, subconsciously, in being able to control that person, draw fuel from them, get character traits and residual benefits. She isn't interested in that person for who they are, what they do, their hopes, their fears, or anything like that, it's superficial. Quite simply, guided by her narcissism, all that she's interested in is this, what can you do for me? And, as you know, narcissists see people as objects, and therefore, in many instances, there's a blurring of individuals. This is why certain narcissists forget people's names. Not deliberately, they simply can't remember who they've been dealing with as a consequence of compartmentalization and objectification. It's something, as I will tell you about when I continue the series about when Harry's wife met me, that actually I experience with regard to her. That she operates at such a superficial level and because her narcissism causes her to be interested in what people can do for her, she doesn't see the people as people. She sees them as objects. One toaster is very much like another to her. And therefore, it is a possibility that she may not have legitimately recalled who he was. However, there is considerable evidence that then goes against this principle. So it's important to point out that as a matter of principle, a narcissist may well meet someone and then forget who they are for the reasons that I've just outlined. 
However, in the case of Prince Andrew, their evidence demonstrates that she must have known who he was. First of all, we know that she took a keen interest in the royal family. She's lied about the fact that she didn't know much about the royal family or at all beforehand. Yet we have seen, of course, her being photographed outside of Buckingham Palace. We've heard from, I think it was Nanaki Priddy, telling us about how she was obsessed with the royal family, in particular Diana, Princess of Wales. And therefore it follows that someone who had such an interest in the royal family would know about the Queen's second son, Prince Andrew. It's not like he's some minor royal. He was a son and a fairly close heir to the throne. And therefore, somebody who has an interest in the royal family would be likely to know who he was. But it goes further than this. Harry introduced the suggestion in spare that Harry's wife didn't know Prince Andrew. Why? This admission is suspicious of itself. First of all, why feel the need to disclose it at all? Why make an admission that you didn't recognise somebody? It's not particularly interesting. Furthermore, it actually makes her look bad and makes her look stupid for not recognising the Duke of York. We know, as a consequence of my analysis of Spare, that it has Harry's wife's cloven hooves all over it and that she will have sanctioned what was included in it and removed stuff also. For her to have allowed the inclusion of a comment that makes her look a bit dim, makes her look stupid, well, that suggests that there has to be some ulterior motive behind it. Furthermore, Harry would know about the necessity of placating his wife. He's had several years of sustained devaluation. And therefore, unless she sanctioned it, he would be mindful of including a statement which would be detrimental to her. Indeed, he obviously, as we saw from other statements, talked about how beautiful she was, how he was lost for words, etc., when he first met her, and so on and so forth. Therefore, to include something which makes her look rather stupid and dim could only be allowed by both Harry, in terms of his placation of her, and by her, as a consequence of her involvement in the writing of the book, if it serves some further purpose. And therefore, there was a greater purpose. She wanted to ensure that there was distance placed between her and Prince Andrew, which then begs the question, why? The clear conclusion must be that they already knew one another, but wanted to make it apparent that they didn't know one another. Now, ordinarily, if she happened to know him beforehand, where would the problem be in that? Oh, hello, Andrew, nice to meet you again. Yes, I, I know about him, I met him X, Y, Z. To deny that she had any prior knowledge of him must mean that there was something to hide. As you know from my earlier work, Prince Andrew was a narcissist, and he faced, of course, allegations that he had unlawful sexual intercourse with Virginia Giuffre, and we've seen other behaviours of him which I've detailed as part of the exploration of his narcissism, including just recently the way that he touched his daughter around the time of the Queen's funeral. We also know that he was a friend of Jeffrey Epstein, the sex pervert and trafficker. Accordingly, it is not unlikely that Prince Andrew would engage in some nefarious sexual behaviours. Indeed, a little while ago, The Sun reported that Prince Andrew went on a wild holiday with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, on which he reportedly visited red-light district clubs and partied with topless women. The Duke of York, who was 40 years old at the time, with two young children, was infamously pictured partying with topless women on a yacht in Thailand. Ghislaine Maxwell is also reported to have accompanied them on the trip, being reported at the time to be staying at the same hotel as the Duke. Andrew and Epstein were reportedly spotted in bars around Patong Resort Town on the island, including one staffed by semi-naked go-go dancers. The sleazy holiday offers a window into the relationship between Andrew and the paedophile couple. He is said to have become increasingly close to them around this time, which was just months before he allegedly sexually abused Virginia Roberts. The Duke, of course, denied any improper behaviour over his relationship with Epstein and Maxwell and denies ever meeting Virginia Roberts. In December 2000, Andrew allowed his close friend Maxwell to hold her 39th birthday at the Queen's Sandringham Estate in Norfolk, where Epstein was a guest. 
the American financier and on-off boyfriend of Maxwell, was allowed to land his private jet at the nearby RAF Marham base, while Andrew spent £20,000 hosting a pheasant shooting weekend to impress his friends. And then just after Christmas, on December the 27th, Andrew reportedly flew to Thailand with Ghislaine Maxwell, where they met up with Epstein again. The pair stayed at a luxury hotel, where the Duke stayed in a £4,000-a-night private villa, featuring a red and gold bedroom, a private black-tile swimming pool. Lana, a Canadian journalist based there, told The Sun Online, the hotel, hotel is an ultra-exclusive resort. It's kind of the go-to place for celebrities and people needing a high level of luxury and privacy. Accordingly, it was here that the infamous pictures of Andrew on board the hotel's yacht surrounded by topless women emerged. And in the evenings, the Duke and Epstein went out in the notorious resort of Patong, about an hour's drive south of the hotel, reportedly visiting the town's local red, district, red light district. Among the entertainment in store for the pair was the Banana Disco, whose, feature, whose website features videos of scantily clad young women. Reports say Epstein and the Queen's Son also visited an adult bar called Crazy Girls by Rock Hard. Its Facebook page promised visitors will find the craziest and sexiest ass-smacking bar with the best friendly ambience and atmosphere. Given all of that, the fact is that a person explained that you wouldn't get a member of the Thai royal family in such a place. The area is very raunchy and many of the girls are prostitutes. The manager of one of the places said that he asked the Duke, are you Prince Andrew? To which he replied, yes, I am. How did you know that? He explained that the Duke entered with four friends and a bodyguard and they ordered a few absolute vodkas. One of the girls went to speak to the Prince and flirted a little, he said. He was very polite, but there was nothing to it, just a brief chat. The Thai jaunt was organised by Andrew's business partner, Johan Eliash, a Monaco-based Swedish sports tycoon who met the Duke at a Buckingham Palace event and reportedly agreed to foot some of the bill for the Queen's son to stay. His adventure, if we can call it that, out in Thailand, which is demonstrative of his behaviours. So we know that Prince Andrew is a narcissist who operates with a sense of entitlement, who is also a somatic narcissist, who is an, a palesser, who's bold and brash, who doesn't give a fig, who doesn't operate with the facade, who likes chasing skirt, who operates in an entitled fashion going where he wants and clearly has a predilection for going on yachts with skimpily dressed women and hanging out in a red light district and sex bars. Hmm. Well, if we add all of that appetite to the fact that there was a suggestion that there was a meeting between the two of them, because Ghislaine Maxwell's unofficial biographer suggested that Harry's wife met Prince Andrew via Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein years before she met Prince Harry. It was reported that a renowned journalist tipped them off to inquire whether the now Duchess of Sussex met Prince Andrew as a friend of the convicted paedophile Epstein before she met Harry. This question was revisited by Summers, the author of Ghislaine Maxwell, an authorised biography in which she explored the connections between Harry's wife, her close friend Marcus Anderson, Epstein, Maxwell and Prince Andrew. Suggesting that Harry's wife's friend Anderson may have been a connector to Epstein as far back as 2001, Summers shared that the media may find a photo of Harry's wife on a yacht in Thailand, cavorting with Prince Andrew through Maxwell. Summers also claimed that Harry's wife had been invited to the Yacht Week 2016, an event later described as Sodom and Gomorrah at sea by GQ magazine, although it remains unclear whether Harry's wife actually attended the event. The author further explained the Duchess of Sussex is controlled by the same forces that controlled Jeffrey Epstein. Accordingly, evidence that suggests that she was attendant on boats, on yachts, and that she met Prince Andrew. Furthermore, there was also a suggestion that she would have been called to give evidence. Harry's wife, some time ago, before the matter was settled, was proposed as a witness in the lawsuit against Prince Andrew. David Boyes, the attorney representing Virginia Roberts Dufre in a civil lawsuit, told the Daily Beast that they may depose the Duchess of Sussex if the case goes to trial. One, she's in the United States who have jurisdiction over her. 
Two, she is somebody who obviously, at least for a period of time, was a close associate of Prince Andrew, and hence is in a position to perhaps see what he did, and perhaps, if not, to have seen what he did to, to have heard people talk about it. Because of her past association with him, she may very well have important knowledge, and will certainly have some knowledge. Three, she's someone who we can count on to tell the truth. She checks all three boxes. Well, it's not entirely certain that she would tell the truth. But there you have the suggestion of her being called as a witness, although it was actually never needed, because of the close association that she had with Prince Andrew. The evidence suggests that they had met one another. Both of them being narcissists also suggests that the environment in which they met is entirely plausible. Him, because he would be able to seek control over individuals as a consequence of having sex with younger women, that he would draw fuel from that. He's not bothered about a facade, and, of course, he would get the residual benefit of the pleasure of having sex. Harry's wife, reportedly reputed to have been a yacht girl, would also, as a narcissist, be seeking to assert control over people through the utilisation of lashings of spicy poontang. The fact that she would receive payment for what she was doing, resulting in a residual benefit also. And remember, back at this time, she was a struggling actress. And whilst it's not the case that all will engage in this behaviour, it is well known that many make ends meet by having to turn to using their bodies, be it through modelling, stripping, prostitution, etc. Again, it isn't a great stretch of the imagination to find that someone who is a narcissist would engage in such behaviours. Accordingly, with regard to the allegation that she and Prince Andrew knew one another. The evidence supports that they did. And also, this is not helped by the ridiculous attempt to put distance between them in Prince Harry's spare. This again shows the nature of her narcissism and its short-termism, the schoolgirl errors that she repeatedly makes mention of. If she had said nothing about it, many people would not necessarily have raised any questions about it. But she drew attention to it. She protested too much. Oh, no, I don't know who he is. Furthermore, of itself, that just seems stupid because of her knowledge about the royal family. She must surely have known who he was. But then it calls into question, why would you try and make out that you didn't know who he was in such a ridiculous way as per that anecdote? The reason must be you'd met and you'd got something to hide. And the past behaviours of Prince Andrew and also her mean, along with the people that they were involved with, that there are clear connections which support the proposition, along with the way that her narcissism causes her to behave, that she did indeed know Prince Andrew. Thus, with regard to this allegation, I would see that it was highly likely that she knew of him. This then poses, in what capacity would she know him? It might be that they were just in the same place at the same time, and that nothing actually happened between them. But given his predilection, for attending sex parties, and the suggestion that she was involved in them also, it does raise the distinct possibility that the liaison between them was more than just having met and known one another, but quite possibly could have been something of an intimate nature. They're both somatic narcissists, and therefore sex is important to them. Him particularly as a means to control, given the fact that he is of decreasing lux, her as a means for the extraction of the residual benefit of money through the assertion of control. Whilst there's no hard evidence to support that there was any sexual liaison between the two, to my mind, it's clear that they had met, it's clear that they did know one another, and that leads to the possibility that something more may well have occurred between them. In terms of exposure, it's a confirmation that they did know one another, and raises the very distinct possibility that more had actually happened. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.